Hey everyone, welcome back to GM Details. In this video I'll be tackling cleaning and decontaminating standard painted alloy wheels using two different cleaning products, Autoglanz Alkali Wheel Cleaner and Built Hamber Surfex HD All Purpose Cleaner. I'll be showing you what methods, products and equipment I'm using throughout the video, some of which have been recommended by you the viewer. So let's get into it. If you have this brush on the right, you've probably picked it up from a Halfords or a car section in a supermarket and for us in the UK, it's a shame that's pretty much all we have as walk-in stores go. Cheap broom-like bristles and a twisted metal stem that rusts quickly and it'll probably snap just as you're about to go in and clean your wheelbarrows, leaving a scratch. Most of the good stuff is all bought online, like this easy large wheel brush with the softest of bristles, it's got a vinyl coated flexible wire stem, or maybe even this Vican massive toothbrush. As I said in the intro, these are pretty standard painted alloy wheels. If you have any specialised wheels though, check with the wheel manufacturer before using any chemicals on it, just to avoid any damage which might not be covered by a guarantee. This process will be fine for the majority of car enthusiasts that watch this channel at least. So this wheel hasn't been cleaned in around a thousand miles, we're just back from a recent trip. It's got embedded brake dust and tar contamination which will need separate chemicals to remove. Can anybody guess what I'm going to use first? No, it's not a fallout remover. I'm going in first with a wheel cleaner, diluted at 1 to 5. That's just over 15% dilution in the IK foamer. I've went stronger than I'd usually use it for a couple of reasons. One, being that a foam is less potent than a liquid. And two, I want to try and remove as much of the ingrain brake dust as I can. Now, although it's 1 to 5, I'm still only using just over 160 millilitres of wheel cleaner instead of a full bottle of fallout remover or even a ready to use wheel cleaner. So, so far I've used £2.49 of chemical making up this 1 litre solution. And this is the first subscriber recommendation was to upgrade to the Detail Factory tyre brush. Three times more expensive than my current one which does the job okay but I accepted the challenge and wow, this is definitely worth the money. While we are using gloves the plastic brush was a bit slippery to use but with the Detail Factory one with its textured rubber edges it's just perfect for comfort and grip. It has softer bristles too, not too soft but just softer, just enough to allow more of the bristles to contact the tyre and give a more uniform clean. I think it's excellent. Now moving on to the wheel cleaner, and you may have noticed its incredible tyre cleaning ability. It's pulling as much dirt and old dressing out of that rubber than rebound would at this dilution. So that's another saving, not only in time, but in product costs, as most good wheel cleaners will do a pretty good job of cleaning tyres too. Alkali is described as non-acidic, but don't be fooled into thinking it's pH neutral either. Usually when a wheel cleaner is described as non-acidic, it's generally an alkaline cleaner. Not that you need to be scared away from an acidic cleaner, both have their place and I'd turn to an acidic one if I wasn't shifting the grime from using an alkaline cleaner. But more importantly, this is described as non-caustic, which makes this one of my favourite wheel cleaners to use regularly. Although caustic soda makes its way into a lot of wheel cleaners from other brands, as caustic soda is cheap and effective, but it can be quite aggressive on delicate components around your wheels like rubber seals and really, to be honest, that concerns me. An example is the aluminium wheel guard around your brake disc. Caustic chemicals can leave a white powdery residue or staining if it's left on too long and not rinsed off properly. I'd just sooner avoid using products like that and Alkali was my favourite wheel cleaner before wheel shampoos were a thing. So why am I not using a wheel shampoo here? As I saw the brake dust staining on the edges of the wheel spokes, I knew I'd need something a little bit stronger than a maintenance clean. So without wasting time trying out a shampoo, I went straight in with Alkali. My wheel cleaning routine has always been tyres, barrels and then faces. My thoughts are that if you spend time cleaning the faces of a wheel, then have the dirt run down the freshly cleaned surface seems a bit of a waste of effort to me, but I don't suppose it really matters which way around it's done. 
Now, if you're a regular viewer to the channel, you probably know I prefer using a mitt like the Garage Therapy Wheel Mitt, but I've seen some people use a Vican brush with soft bristles, and while this one looks like a toothbrush for elephants, I thought I'd give it a try. It's not really a wheel brush, it's more of a general purpose brush, but it's the only one I have. I find the bristles are lovely and soft, and for the face of the wheel, I can see the appeal of it. Makes a fantastic job covering that area very quickly. Around the spokes, it's not quite as handy as I find the large handle a bit of an inconvenience. It's gliding around the wheel pretty well though with the lubrication from Alkaloid. It's the first time I've used it with the IK Foamer too. I usually only have it in the bucket and a weaker 10 to 1 dilution, but it's still within Autoglanzi's recommendations. You can use it as high as 1 to 1 for really grubby wheels. Maybe something like these Audi wheels I saw the other day. They might need something as strong. A final sweep around the tyre reveals a lovely clean sweep of suds. What is it Mark from Sparkling Auto says? If it's white, it's alright. Okay, everywhere else except these corners has come up fantastically well. The wheels are brighter and I'm putting these corners down to technique. I had a feeling I wasn't quite getting into the right angle into these areas with the large flat brush like that Vican. Or is it contamination that the wheel cleaner just isn't capable of cleaning due to what it is? If it's embedded grime, it'll need something else, so we'll come back to this later in the video. So before we move on to the Surfex, we've just got one more wheel to clean, and I just want to see how using a different technique with the Vican brush will work on the rear wheel. So I'm still using exactly the same dilution of alkali as I did in the first wheel. So I'm using the brush a little bit flatter and making sure the bristles get into those edges of the spokes, but it's in the corner of the spokes I need to concentrate the bristles. I'm really impressed with how Alkaloid is so well lubricated, sudsy and it's not drying out, giving me plenty of time to work with it to get around the whole of the wheel. At this dilution and used through the IK Foamer, it's actually performing more like a wheel shampoo than an alkaline wheel cleaner. It's just a pity Hoops wheel shampoo isn't as good as this. Now that's more the result I'd expect, a cracking clean with just some tar spots left to deal with, which we'll get to in the decontamination stage. So let's now see how Built Hamber Surfex HD gets on with the other two wheels. So this is the driver side front wheel and pretty much exactly the same level of dirt and contamination the other side had. What I'm really interested to see here is if the brush itself is going to leave any residue in the corner like with Alkali. So Built Hamber Surfex HD, a product a lot of you have recommended to me, particularly for wheel cleaning, and I've went with a 10 to 1 dilution here. That's 90 millilitres of chemical to 910 millilitres of water in the IK Foamer. And although you could argue it's unfair to test one at 5 to 1 and one at 10 to 1, I just wanted to see if using Surfex at a weaker dilution could be better. And from the tyres alone, you could see there that it's degreasing powers in action without any agitation pulling out the grime and the old tyre dressings. I'm really not getting on with this Vican brush at all. I love how soft it is and everything, but the long handle on it just is a hindrance, and I just can't stand the constant clacking of that brush off the spokes. Ah, uh, the good old boar hair brush. So now we're not really going to find out if it was the brush that left any areas untouched or the chemical, but I wasn't enjoying using it, so I've binned that for now, and I'm just going to concentrate on using these little smaller brushes and or any wash mitts for doing any small detailed work on the wheels. You can get easily in and around those spokes and tackle tricky areas like around the air valve and the wheel nut areas a lot easier in my opinion. So looking at the actual wheel though, it's not as foamy as Alkaloid, maybe due to the weaker dilution, but I didn't find it as slick as Alkaloid either. But certainly, results speak for themselves. 
Surfix has done well, it's left less trace of dirt, even the barrels looked a little cleaner and although it's still left a few marks here and there, it is a better result than with using alkali but I did use the boar hair brush where I didn't with alkali so I'll leave it for you to let me know in the comments which you think which product has done a better job. Now if you're watching this and thinking that you'd like to give Surfex HD a try, I found Surfex on Into Detailing at £9.99 for a litre. Now the litre bottle does come with a spray head but it's not ready to use, they don't make a ready to use version of it. If you want to go for the 5 litres it's just under £20 which is amazing value. And for the mix that I've made up is around 9%, it's only cost me 90 pence for the 1 litre solution in that IK foamer. No wonder you guys love it so much. It's also safe for the environment, being biodegradable, non-toxic and non-caustic. I believe it also has corrosion inhibitors in it as well, so fantastic for doing those wheels. So as usual, all the products and accessories in today's video will be linked below for you to go and check out without having to search for them. And a reminder to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos from GM Details. So with the last little bit of brushwork finished, it's time to look at the results. And without using that Vican, it doesn't have those grubby areas on the base of the spokes. The boar's hair brush along with the built hamber Surfix HD has been an excellent combination. Now to do a full decontamination of your wheels, you're really better taking them off to do so, just to gain access to the barrels and behind the spokes. But in this video, I'm concentrating on what most of us will do before applying some level of protection on our wheels to achieve the best surface for a wax or a wheel sealant. It's much the same rules apply for wheels as paintwork. Clean, decontaminate and protect with a wax or a sealant, maybe even a ceramic coating, but that would probably benefit from polishing before the coating, but that's not where I'm aiming for in this video. The challenge here is to remove the ingrain marks in the corner of the spokes where the alkali wasn't able to. So far I've sprayed on Wobo's fallout remover looking for a reaction to take place where the chemical finds baked on brake dust and a reactive colour change takes place to show it working. But in this grubby mark it doesn't look like it's brake dust related as it hasn't changed colour at all. So with agitation it looks as though it's removing some of the grime but not all of it and after working all the way around the wheel there's very little fallout coming from the wheel face at all. It's not a criticism of the product, there just isn't much fallout to remove. After the rinse the wheel is certainly looking a little better but still not 100% clean so I'm now going to try just one more chemical to see if I can improve it any further. Wowo's tar and glue remover. I find a common problem with stains on wheels that neither an alkaline nor an acid product will remove. A tar remover sometimes works. I want the product to work on a dry surface because if a tar remover comes into contact with water it starts to emulsify straight away and it's less effective. So after a quick dry I spray some of the product onto the area that I want to target. Give it a few moments to dwell and I'm going to use a cotton pad to try and demonstrate if it's cleaned any of the dirt away. It has removed more grime and that's only from these two spokes, so even after an alkaline wheel cleaner and an acidic fallout remover, a tar and glue remover is still going that little bit further to remove grime. There's a little bit of damage to that spoke edge and I can just see the beginnings of corrosion so I'm not going to go any further with that, but using a clay bar would be my next tool to try and get that last little bit of grime out. The wheels have a lot of tar spots all over them, so these were very quickly and easily taken care of with the Wowo's tar remover.
So after using a solvent cleaner, I always like to go back over the area with a shampoo again, just to neutralise any chemical residue left behind. And now let's take a look at the finished result. There's a better look at the damaged area and although it's not going to win any awards and could probably benefit from a refurb, but the rest of the wheel looks clean as a whistle and that's from the whole clean and decontamination process. It's a lot of work but if you're genuinely into keeping your car cleaner than anyone else on the street, the effort is well worth it in my book. I hope you've enjoyed watching the comparison between Alkaloid and Surfex HD. There really can't be any dispute that for cleaning power the win goes to Surfex for its ability to be a better cleaner at a weaker dilution and cost less to begin with which rolls into another win for Surfex being best value for money. So how about an alternative? Well I'd like to try Cock Kimmy Green Star against Surfex next to see which one comes out best in that test. So that about wraps up this little product comparison. As always, I look forward to reading your comments and remember you have an open invite to come and join the detailing discussion group on Facebook, a non-toxic, fun and friendly place to ask questions and post pictures of your own detailing. I look forward to seeing you there and on the next video. Take care. Cheerio bye.